uh, the neurosculpting model is really born out of a bunch of other modalities that have worked for me, the bits and pieces that really took me deep, and my understanding of neuroscience through my certification in neuroleadership. So what I've created is a way for left and right brain to speak and participate in the meditation process. I've found in a lot of other meditation processes, I'm asked to negate my left brain to walk away from it and experience a, a larger sense, possibly something that might be associated with a right brain experience. Sometimes that's really difficult to do, to negate one side of our functioning to favor another. So for me, the neurosculpting model begins with breathing and a somatic awareness of different body parts to just start drawing our awareness into what we might not normally focus on. It also involves a little bit of a novel stimulation, maybe bringing an awareness to a different position or body part that we might not normally have as a way to spark those learning neurotransmitters that wake up the prefrontal cortex and say, hey, I don't normally pay attention to this. What's going on here? That forced non-threatening attention is the foundation for learning and mapping. Um, and then from there, it's a process of creating a plausible storyline. Once the brain is primed to believe it with all sorts of learning neurotransmitters, to create a plausible storyline that constantly flips between allowing for left brain concepts to be part of the story and then associating those concepts with right brain experiences. So for instance, when I guide these meditations, I will have people think of a concept. Maybe this concept is the concept of safety. And then I have them associate a color or a texture or a symbol to represent safety. So bringing in left and right brain communication all the time throughout the process so that the neuroplastic connections are not just favoring one archetypal side of the brain or the other. This is a holistic approach. And so the storytelling becomes a partnership between logic and experience and linear thought and abstract thinking um, because I found that when one side or the other is negated, I hit a wall. And so that's the foundation of the neurosculpting process is to create that rich learning environment in a non-threatening way for um, whole brain communication. And then sealing up the practice with some more novel stimulation to bring in that learning environment one more time, because truly neuroscience has shown us that our ability to create new neural pathways need not be physical experience. It, it could be imagined, perceived, constructed mental experience that creates these neural maps. So why not take advantage of that and start creating new stories to start programming our neurological landscape the way that serves us best.